All right, hey guys, we're gonna go live here and uh, YouTube. Just wanna check the yep live stream. So basically, I wanted to show you guys and show you guys how to um, do uh, compress files while still keeping the file quality. And so this is just gonna compress the codec a little bit, but it's still gonna look pretty good. And so this is called compressing. And this is called uh, Handbrake. This is the tool Handbrake right here. We're going to go ahead and do that really quick. But first and foremost, let's just kind of minimize the screen. Again, this is OBS streaming here with a webcam. Bam. And this is also my Sennheiser microphone connected with my H8 right here. Mixer on. So we're going to do that. Go ahead and try out this program. So. Basically, we're on Handbrake, and Handbrake is a program where we can compress the different files and get that going here. So that was a funky beat. So as you can see right here, this is the uh, movie MVI002. This is 30.8 gigs. That is a lot of gigs. And so if you add this into a Premiere Pro, it's going to look really, really um, laggy, one, and it's going to be really good quality. And so, but the beauty of this program, Handbrake, is, let me just open it up really quick. It's really nice because you can just drag and drop a folder. You can drag and drop a MP4, drag and drop it there, and it'll convert it into a more compressed file, but also MP4 file. So if you have like an MVI and you want to convert it to MP4, you can. And also if you have... Um, a really high file size like this one, the 32 gigs, that's huge. It's gonna lag your uh, you know, video processors and also your editing time and all that stuff and it's not gonna be good, so uh, bottom line. So what I'm gonna do tonight is actually uh, show you guys how I got 30.8 gigs into 301 megabytes. And so that's a huge, huge difference. That's like a 9,000% right difference or 900% difference, something like that. It's huge. Um, so this will stream a lot better. And so you can see the quality here, it's still pretty good. This is shot at 4K. 10 bit 422 on the Canon C70. This is a really great um, quality still. I mean, you can still see it is compressed. It looks like a 1080p maybe, but still the file type is really nice. And so, um, again, it's a lot better than having to use the 30 gigs because let's just kind of put it here. And so, this is for a Hyojung conference video, but I'll be using this as also a tutorial of how to compress a file size and how to use it. There is no audio here. This is all recorded on my uh, Sennheiser with the H8 uh, mixer here. And so with that, we have this nice, um, you know, animated interview. Um, and so, okay, I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna show you guys how to use this program really quick. What you do is just go to your folder, find that program, find that process. First, we have to find the, um, let's see, this is the different ones. Okay, here we go. So I did that one. We got, that one needs to be, okay. So this one's 14 gigs. What you do is you just, um, let me exit out of here. We don't need zoom. Got it here. Close that program. Yeah. We also don't even need this one too. Um, so MVI 0003, three zeros and number three. Drag and drop it to the program right here. It's gonna, you know, scan 40, 50, 60%, 70. It's really fast. That's great. It, this program was like, it looks really complicated. What do you do, right? There's all these different summary dimensions, filters, video, audio, all that stuff. Start encode. What do I do? First, you want to go to browse. You want to choose the file location. I'm going to do my unconditional uh, just file. And I want everything to go in the the date of that, the 5-1. So it's going to be converted here to MVI-003. And um, I'll just put handbrake, HB for handbrake. 
Um, you save that as MP4 right here. You can do other ones, but MP4 is like the universal one you want to do. Save that. Once you start save that, you have the file here, the source. You know it's that one. You can go to video, and there is right here in video. It may look complicated. What's all this stuff doing? Consistent quality or constant quality. It's at 22 RF. So I think this is resolution, something like that. But anyways, the more left you have lower quality, the more right you have better quality placebo, which is kind of, you know, maybe a similar quality. So on the more right you go, you have better quality. So you want a lower number of con constant quality. But if you have the higher the quality, the bigger the file size, the lower the quality, the lower the file size. But it's the, uh, once you go to 44 or th even 39, something like that, it's going to be like really pixelated and not the best quality. So if you want to continue with like the best quality without losing the file size, I would I would recommend 22. If I were to go to 20, maybe that's okay to do. Um, anyways, 2022 is fine. Again, if you go up to here, it's going to like, I think exponentially go back up to the file size again to a similar one. So this is 14. If I go to like probably up here, it's going to go to like probably seven gigs instead of 14 gigs. So I recommend 20. And I think this will go from 14 gigs to about 500 megabytes huge difference that's a huge difference that's like seven times right the size and so you're cutting down on time and it's like pretty much the same quality so again video quality is huge um it's a huge thing again codec is a huge thing that you know for video editors is going to be but this is going to really really help um you know get all of that stuff out and so once you have this done you have the video setting here that's all you pretty much need to do is just change this you know if you want to but leave it at 2022 you already browse it after that start to encode and that's it three steps browse it send your video you want to compress to the file type of the, the folder and then after that do the constant quality and after that start to encode that's it that's all you do and as you see here it's right here being made mvi 003 hb so it's a zero bytes now because it's still being encoded and we're just having to wait right here so time remaining is 10 minutes. That's huge. And if you say to yourself, oh my God, it's going to take, you know, 12 minutes, 15 minutes per video. That's a lot of video, but you're actually saving more time if you do this first, rather than putting all that file, that huge, huge file size into a file folder. And so I have a, um, I have a 3090 graphics card with like a, a $5,000 CLX, you know, desktop mid tower, you know, computer. And that's really cool and everything. That's really good. But the fact of the matter is um, with drone footage and with 10-bit 422 codec, you know, high codec uh, video file size and everything like that, it's all going to add up and it's all going to become something that's going to probably make your uh, video lag no matter what computer you have. I mean, you would probably have to have like a government computer with like uh, coolant, you know, anti-free, something like that coolant to cool your computer just to have your computer run like super fast. Uh, to have exactly no lag for drone shots or 10 to 42 file sizes or anything like that. So I highly recommend um, any fi filmmaker out there to use handbrake for those situations. If you want to lower the codec, you want to lower the file size, do that. And then, uh, you know, without sacrificing too much data. And so this is again, better to do before uh, post-production before editing, because if you edit with a big file size, again, it's going to lag, it's going to cause you a lot of heart, uh, heartache probably because you're spending so much time on the computer rather than living life. Right. Um, so that's something I really want to, I highly recommend to do is to do that. Okay. Alrighty. So now, uh, while that's being done, I'm going to, okay. Time remaining is eight minutes. I'm going to start now with this file and drag and drop it into the Premiere Pro, which I did. And I need to get the audio. So because I didn't, uh, connect the audio here with the, with this audio, um, it's a separate audio source. And so I have to sync that up, but it doesn't take that long to sync. 
not that I think, and I, I don't think so, right? That pun. Um, but what I have to do now is uh, find that audio folder and the SD card separately from the H8 and then uh, drag and drop it here. Um, this does sound really well. I love the H8, you know, hand recorder for field stuff. This guy right here, I love it for field stuff and everything like that. The downside is that it, it's only manual gain control, which is cool and everything, but I don't really like, you know, the, the whole, how do you say, um, you have to always manually do it. I would rather have an automatic thing, sit it, let it sit there and just do it rather than having to watch that levels and everything. Sometimes people can speak like really low and then go really high. And so, um, as you can see here, there is this bar, which is the mic stand, which is it's on right now. And the, then the sound mic, which is this one right here. Um, this is connected to the HA, so I'm going to have to separately sync this now. So now we're just going to go ahead and go towards this uh, editing program here. Wow, it is really laggy for some reason. So it's running smooth. I love the, you know, the frame and everything. Um, so that's, there's one. So anyways, this is a huge conference video. We're reaching out to Korean influencers, people who are Korean or Korean war veterans who want to bring a message about peace and reunification. I think this is a great project to do. And it's a great thing to, um, to catch on to, I would say. Uh, so here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and So I'm looking for one more file. Four ten. Four thirteen. Okay, so this is the Canon C seventy. This is what I need to also film or edit. So also, this is another uh, film that I did. One thing I realized is that this is, I have to, there's Nakosan and Microsan there. I have to, for this editing, I have to like watch this whole video over again, uh, uh, which takes like an hour. This is like literally 30 minutes plus like another hour before. It's a long, long, long thing. So here's another file, 4.78 gigs. I'm gonna have to handbrake that. Um, it's amazing how I brought the 0056 down to, which is this one, from 19.7 gigabytes to 382 megabytes. It's amazing what you can do with this. And so actually this isn't too bad, the 4.8. I could actually, because of time, I could actually just you know go ahead and do that and I remember I was just setting up here and then testing out the mic and seeing where to go and everything, but yeah. Okay. Here's some more files here. Even the B-rolls are four gigs.
I have, since uh, I have had been able to go back, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to go see some of these different places today ah. and what they look like today. And I took pictures today of, of this. Yeah. Like this picture, there's but the thing. And I'm just going to consolidate all the B-rolls here. about this one. Yeah. This one, yeah, not being a happy memory, was it was like uh, February and it was cold. Oh, and, uh, it is cold. Yeah. There's a mother of peace. Oh, this is actually okay. Got to rescale this. But yeah, it. Uh, But yeah, it, uh, I actually kind of don't like how it's the book is flipped like that, so I'm just gonna rotate it. Okay, gotta rescale this. So it's like this. Hopefully, it could work. And now it doesn't really look the same. It just. Oh, yeah. That is cold. Yeah. But yeah, it, uh, it could get extremely cold mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. or extremely hot. And, uh, oh. and then, of course, it got wet in between. Or like June, yeah. and, June and July, you had your, yes. uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, not mon monsoons, I guess. Monsoon season. Yeah, mon monsoon season. Right. Like June and July. Mm -hmm. And that would get, there's a, uh, uh, let's see, this, this way. There's some pictures in here um, of other results of the uh, monsoon. Oh, this, one? this this was that's where I, I slept. Ah. That was, it was, it was in reserve. Uh, we weren't that wasn't on the line. But this is really good B-rolls for the documentary too. I, I, I just realized. So there's so much things. This is this. By number twelve. Uh, is, there, is, yeah, is there a, a number? Uh, there's really good for the documentary. Uh, a circle of that area. And these were just different places. And um, like this is a, a canal. That went through. Okay, so these are all B rolls again. I'm gonna label this a uh, different like color for B rolls. These are all the kind of highlighted ones that are good to go. That's really nice. So I'm gonna do. Uh, I like labeling different color things. This would be a cerulean color. And I'll add this for that. So I have to go ahead and look for the audio setting. Of the audio for these files and it's in my SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of grab that really quick. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do really quick for you guys is I know everyone's like seeing this and it's like really dark and it is dark and it was dark but we have actually I lower the quality for this. Um, sorry that was my chair squeaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the three-way color corrector on this thing and go ahead and drag and drop that here. I'm going to show you guys how to heighten the color. So right here, this is the input level on the three-way color corrector. This uh, automatically just made it brighter by putting the input color like that. And also the master, right? The, the master saturation. So. It does look more black and white when you do that with the input color corrector. But now, as you can see, this is uh, after and this is before. So that, oh, this is before and this is after. And so this is with color correction. This is uh, without color correction. So as you can see, um, while we're filming in raw, filming in raw and all that stuff uh, doesn't look so good because the color may be, look brighter or whatever. But when you start to uh, do post-production and brighten it up, it'll look from this dark position uh, to this. So look at that difference before and after. 
And the reason why we film in RAW and we film uh, things like this before, because if we film really brightly and we have blown out light and we go back to post-production, it's not going to look this good. Everything is going to be really blown out and bright. So we can still keep that uh, light as natural as possible without being blown out. So we want to film everything as natural as possible here and then go back here and then do post-production uh, brightening up. So right now we see the walls, it looks kind of greenish, it looks like that. So if I want to, if I want to make it more of a cream color or how it, how it is, all I got to do is go to the opposite of green, which is the kind of more pink. That will, that will bring out more of the natural color. I don't want to do too much though, just a little bit. So anyways. Because the more green it looks, the more unnatural it looks, but you can definitely get the natural look there. So right there is okay. Okay, so that's good for now. And the same thing, same principle here. We just get the three-way color corrector. If I copy and paste this on here, it's this, this is custom made, it's going to look a little bright or a little off because this is its own separate room, different coloring, different fluorescent lighting. I think this is tungsten lighting up here in the fluorescent right in this office. It's kind of an older building. This one's more of a uh, probably, you know, four watt, 32 watt. I'm not sure just this light in this lamp is different. The shade is different. So because this lighting here is a little bit different, we're going to have to go and adjust it according to the light. And so right here we have So again, this is before and this will be after. So just a little bit of brightness makes a huge difference. And also just bumping up the color saturation is a huge difference. So this is more than natural color. I did record this in a cooler light in about 3,400 Kelvin because the lighting here was a little bit cooler. I had to match that. Um, and so we can just go a little bit warmer here, which just add a little bit orange pop if necessary. But I don't want to throw off everything too much and the master there, uh, right there, or maybe right there, the highlights. Highlights is, is really like the minimal stuff here. But anyways, yeah, we got that. This is okay. Feel. Yeah, it's, it's a good look. I had to move the mic a lot because he was kind of hitting the mic a lot with his hands. <laughs> and I was moving a lot, but... Um, so between this, oh, and just actually going from here to here, I know I could have done better in the quality. Uh, there was minimal light. So I know post-production, you know, brightening up isn't the best. We want to do it with the best lighting there. Um, I could have definitely brought in a, a light, but I didn't. At least this light here is like 60 bucks. This light would have made a huge difference, even though it's not the best lighting as well. It still is something better than having no light. Um, but you live and learn. Um, even that's not heavy, so it would have been okay in the car. Yeah, so we'll just add this here. And good thing about the 10 bit 422 4K, you know, footage, I could always just crop in. Again, this is going to be um, edited with video or audio. So I'll just do like a basic cut here. I could do a zoom in cut so I can just go from the same angle and just zoom cut just like that and still have it good quality. Right now it's like a quarter quality. So, um, and this is good enough for, you know, using for events. I like this um, angle. You still see his two eyes here. Sometimes in interviews you see like only half of the face, but it's good. All is good in interviews to film at like an angle. Then so you still see their two eyes and so this is really good to kind of capture here. So you still see that here. We're just gonna go back and yeah, undo that. Okay, so next up for me is to add these B-rolls on top, but also to add 
the sound. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this out of frame. I'm going to add the sound file here so I can you know, mix it out later on. Okay, so that's my task right now is to find the sound audio for this whole works here. Go ahead and do that. Actually, I do believe it's going to be in this set here. Go ahead and do that. Hello, hello. We're going to record right now. They're all service. Some template, piece of TF, uh, 400 pi or network.
And North Korea leader met to together. He prepared. So as you can see there, there's a... This is the first time happened to This guy here, so... Oh. Did you hear the volume here? Young, but hardest. Peace, peace, peace. Why we need the peace? They don't know most of the people. Congress men also yeah, yeah. Oh, you have cut oh yep anyway so that's that so far there's just so much to do um I want to cut this live stream pretty quick here because I don't want to um take up too much time and there's gonna be a lot of different things going on so basically what I'm gonna do is match the audio and then match the audio to this one as well I have to find that SD card which is uh here somewhere and again that's <laughs> That's just the beauty and the work of, you know, film editing. And so what we learned today recap is just the compression of the video sizes down to a lower, uh, yes, a lower quality, but it's still the same quality look. I would say rather just a lower codec um, while still maintaining your quality. So again, this is, you know, still 4K. It looks amazing at 300 megabytes rather than 30 gigs. You still, it looks, in the, to the human eye, it looks really good. Uh, same with this one. We brighten this uh, picture up here with the Korean War veterans video. And we did some B-roll cutting here and labeling there. And so what we're going to do is just get that going. Without the sea, you cannot. But that's it. No. I yep, so that's that. So I'm going to end the live stream here. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining today. And again, this is it for the Hyojin Conference. This is going to be really important clips to add for the sake of unity in North South Korea. And uh, it's a huge project that's going to happen pretty soon. That's why I'm like on a time crunch on it. So I got to get it done. Um, and so that's it. Thanks guys for watching. Hope you guys learned something from this and also I'm going to continue to do some more live streams and get better and better at this. So it'll be great. Thank you. Aju. Amen. 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 Amen.